Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Rowe here again, and today we are going to be discussing the events that took place when Rabute Gilliman met his brother Mortarion for the first time since his reappearance in the 40k universe. Now, first off, spoiler warning for anyone not up to date on the current lore as always, and has in particular not read the novel Dark Imperium Plague War, as the events we discuss take place in this novel. And again, as always, I really recommend you purchase the Black Library books themselves first and read through or, or listen if you get the audio versions yourself because that's the best way to enjoy them. And, you know, in particular, these ones are very, very good if you're a Primark lover like myself because you get a lot of Rebute Gilliman action in them. So, with that said, let's begin. So, during the course of Gilliman's Indomitus Crusade across the Imperium, his brother Mortarion unleashed a plan to decimate Ultramar and he invaded the 500 worlds with a huge combined force of his own Death Guard Legion and Nurgle demons. Gilliman himself was brought word of this invasion in person by none other than Ultramarine's 4th Company Captain Uriel Ventris and on a side note it was Uriel Ventris novels that were my first real foray into the Black Library novels many years ago and that meeting was particularly cool for me to read. Now, Gilliman at first knew he couldn't just be seen to rush home to Ultramar as soon as it was in a little danger, you know, to be forsaking the rest of the Imperium for his own own home. So he placed trust in the defence of uh, McCrag in particular in Marnius Calgar. You know, he trusted that Marnius Calgar would be able to defend McCrag until Gilliman could finish up his crusade properly, which he promptly did. And obviously upon his return, he immediately takes over the organization of the defense, sets about taking the fight back to the Death Guard. And after his brother's stalling, finally comes face to face with his brother Mortarion. Hello, brother, he said. Gilliman struggled against his bonds. The demon who had fought him stepped back and gloated. Battle continued in all quarters. Imperial armor pushed into the enemy. Colquan and the rest continued their fights, barred from aiding their master by the remainder of the play guard. He could not move. The energy lash around his sword arm was the weakest, its warp energies sapped by the power of the Emperor's sword. Perhaps, given time, he might rest his limb free, but he had no time. Gilliman stared up into the face of his brother. Like Fulgrim, like Magnus, Mortarion was no longer a being crafted by ancient science, but something more, and something less. A half-man, warped by chaos. Mortarion had always been taller than his brother, but as a demon, he was so much bigger that comparisons of height lost meaning. Mortar Mortarion was of another order of creature to Gilliman, a demigod remade as a monster from a child's story. Beneath his cowl, his stern face had decayed on the bone. The eyes were white, the skin grey, and ropes of mucus ran from the fleshless hole of his nose visible over his respirator. All that was human about him was inflated to a preposterous degree and gilded with insanity. From his back, two giant moth's wings spread. Nor had his war gear escaped alteration. The barbarian plate had turned from its original white to a pond water green, pockmarked with glistening sores and grown to suit its wearer's new stature. Chains hung, reeking censures and trinkets that displayed Mortarion's allegiance to the god of plagues. His war scythe had grown to the size of a communications mast and sprouted osseous frills. His Zeno's pistol, the Shilongi lantern, had changed the least, only growing to fit his size. Falls of Cosperum welled up from within Mortarion's robes and rolled to the ground, filling the mist with ghostly faces. Demon flies and mites flew around him in Solomon circles, bearing symbols of false religion. Now, Mortarion has only revealed himself once Gilliman has become trapped, fighting against demons. But it's the classic demon entrance, emerging only when the, the hero is at his weakness with a hello brother. Uh, I really do like the, the entrance that Mortarion prevails there. He's, uh, he's very uh, fe fe theatrical, should I say. Struggling to get that word out. And it's worth noting that this is the first time uh, that Rabute is meeting his brother. 
since, as far as we know, since the days of the Great Crusade. Because obviously Gilliman was trapped over in Ultramar for the majority of the Horus Heresy uh, by the Warp Storms, and Mortarion was battling it out with the Khan. So unless we get some big plot changes somewhere along the line of the remaining Horus Heresy novels, or maybe in the scouring ones afterwards, Mortarion and Gilliman haven't actually seen each other in a long, long time. And again, the, the description says it all. Mortarion had always been taller than his brother, but as a demon he was so much bigger that comparisons of height lost meaning. Mortarion was of another order of creature to Gilliman, a demigod remade as a monster from a child's story. Now how must Gilliman be feeling seeing yet another of his fallen brothers remade into some form of monster? How far they had fallen must must definitely play on his mind and their interaction continues. I face you at last, my brother, said Gilliman. Mortarion chuckled. You make it sound as if you have brought me to heal and you will beat me in combat. After 10,000 years, you remain pompous. Look about you. I have you. I have won. You have not won yet. If this is not a victory, said Mortarion, then I should probably consult one of your tedious manuals to better acquaint myself with the meaning of the term. It's not over. Gilliman continued his efforts to free his arm while he spoke. Mortarion glanced down at the Emperor's sword. Father gave you his blade, I see. Or did you take it off his dead knee? I suppose it matters not. You will not wield it against me. Fight me, you coward, growled Gilliman. The flames on the Emperor's sword flared. Now I really like those short passages as it raises an interesting question. Did the Emperor give Gilliman his sword? You know, did the Emperor during their reunion direct Gilliman to take his sword? Now I've spoken about Gilliman's reunion with his father in a previous upload and if you haven't seen that, please go check it out. Now I am of the mind the Emperor was short and to the point in their reunion and did indeed tell Gilliman to take his sword when he was giving him his orders, so to speak, not just because it would make him a symbol of his power and authority, but because the sword is his power. It's imbued with a portion of the Emperor's power, and it can give demons a true death. And I think obviously the Emperor knew the state of the Imperium that Gilliman is going to need all the help he can get. Fight me, you coward, growled Gilliman. The flames on the Emperor's sword flared. You know, the Emperor's sword reacts to the demons around it. It's, it's the complete hatred that the demons have because they know the power of the Emperor can, can give them that death that nothing else can. Uh, anyway, let's continue. Mortarion laughed. Do you think I would stoop so low as to fight you, my brother? Look at me. He spread the shrouds of his wings wide, fanning Gilliman with plague winds. You are so far beneath me, I am mightier than you could ever be. Why would I waste my strength on crushing an insect like you? Instead, you serve your wickedness for my people, who cannot fight back at all, said Gilliman. How noble of you. Wickedness, said Mortarion. Is that what you see? I bring them salvation from the hell our father created. I bring them the joy of endless rebirth. I bring them life. You cast yourself as a warlord prophet, but you are a slave. I pity you, brother. You have deceived yourself. It is you who is the slave, hissed Mortarion, the slave of our uncaring father, who made us to do his bidding. You who trod the path he laid out for you without question, sure that the lies he told were the truth, too stupid and trusting to question them for yourself. You never saw what he did to me. The first time I met him, he stole from me my life struggle. It was nothing to him, a bump in his smooth road to godhood. He took what I had worked and suffered for, and he did not care. He called himself the Emperor. What kind of being has the presumption to claim such a title? Who takes and takes the affections of his sons and gives so little in return? He would not even deign to tell us his name. You swallowed it all, poisoned milk from our machine mother, machines he created, things like we are. I tried his way. I should never have compromised my own principles, but I did. 
I was a champion of common people. I abandoned them for a galactic despot. Now I serve the people again. And here we see a seed of resentment that was planted you know, minutely from the very beginning. When the Emperor met Mortarion and saved him from his death in, the, in his final battle against his adoptive father, the, the warlord on Barbarus. And we've seen it before in Gilliman himself, the, the human struggle. Who takes and takes the affections of his sons and gives so little in return? He would not even deign to tell us his name. At the end of the day, with all the Primarchs, it, it always comes down to their emotions, you know. Mortarion, like so many of the demon Primarchs, uh, a neglected son, just wishing for some affection from their father. And it, it makes you wonder how they would react if the Emperor would commune with them now, as a father. How would they react to that? Save Horus and the, and the loyalist Primarchs before he, you know, the Emperor was interned into the Golden Throne, none of the demon Primarchs could have spoken with their father since the days of the Great Crusade before the Emperor went into the Imperial basement to work on his project. How would they react if they did have some form of interaction with the Emperor now? That's a really interesting question. Or, or could some form of interaction from the Emperor before have prevented them to, some of them to fall as far as they did? Yeah, really interesting questions, but let's continue. Mortarion glared at Gilliman with milky eyes, defying him to challenge his pronouncements. If I am a puppet of an uncaring master, then what are you, said Gilliman, a being who wallows in warp power while crying hatred for the witch, a plaything for corruption and disease. You blustered long and hard against psychic power and claimed total fearlessness and indomitability none could match. Yet when faced with death, the ultimate challenge, you failed. Mortarion flinched and rose up in the air, his inset wings beating quickly. You do not know what you speak of. You do not know what it was like. I was shown the depths of suffering of a kind you could never understand, and as death beckoned, I was given the power to withstand it. I know no suffering, Gilliman laughed bleakly. I saw my brothers, many of whom I loved, all of whom I respected, turn their backs upon our creator and plunge the galaxy into war. I saw humanity reach for one golden moment of peace, brush it with its fingers, and then I saw you and the others spit it out and tear it away. I died at the hands of my kin. I awoke to a galaxy so far from the glorious enlightenment of the Emperor it resembles the Ketheric Hell. You turned your back on all you claim to stand for, cravenly, without a second fault. Where was my brother, who would weather any storm, whose body shrugged off poison, who would never, ever give in? What happened to him? The Mortarion of old would never have allowed this. He would have died with honor. You must have seen, as your warriors were transformed into these hulking monsters, what awaited you should you say yes to salvation. You who called yourself the strongest of us, the redoubtable, the master of any pain or sorrow. How hollow those words seem to me now. I at least know what I am. I look at myself, and though I perceive many failures, I know with unshakable certainty that I perform the duty I was created for, that I fight for the preservation of mankind. Then you do not fight for the Emperor? asked Mortarion, his voice an insinuating rattle. I fight for what he believed in. Advocates quibbling, you fight for yourself. I remain a champion of humanity, whereas you are the lackey of evil. Am I? said Mortarion. His wings beat softly. Then tell me, Rabute, if our father were so good, look me in the eye and tell me that he loved us all as any father should love his sons. Gilliman stared at him, his jaw clenched in anger. Well, here we begin to see all the pent-up emotions again that Rabute is carrying around with him since his reawakening. I saw my brothers, many of whom I loved, all of whom I respected, turn their backs upon our creator and plunge the galaxy into war. I awoke to a galaxy so far from the glorious enlightenment of the Emperor it resembles hell. 
you know, where was my brother who could weather any storm, whose body shrugged off poison, who would never ever give in? What happened to him? The Mortarian of old would never have allowed this. You know, really, really great writing by Guy Haley. I don't always agree with the actions of certain Primarchs or the way they, they portrayed the Emperor at times, but the way Guy Haley has been portraying Gilliman's emotions in these Dark Imperium novels, you know, it's been absolutely world-class writing. You can, you can just feel Rabute's pain and anger at everything. He's so disillusioned uh, since his reawakening by everything that he's found around him. He just, he wants a brother to relate to, to talk to, and the only ones he's got, the only ones he's got are the ones that have turned away and caused all of these problems. You know, it's, he's, can you imagine being in his situation with the weight of the galaxy on top of you? No, not good. And let's carry on. Mortarion laughed. It began as a wheezing in his lungs, thick with phlegm, rattled up by his dry throat and clacked his teeth together behind his breathing mask before hissing out in puffs of gas. You know, don't you, Rabute? You've seen it. He wagged one long, skeletal finger at his kin. I knew something was different about you. He leaned close. You spoke with him on terror. Tell me, what did he say? Did he plead to be released? Did he beg you to set free from his golden throne? Gilliman said nothing. Oh, my brother, it cannot be, Mortarion said in mock horror. Did he say nothing? Is our father dead? He stood back and shook his head. Of course he isn't, is he? Not in any real sense. Beings like him are beyond mortality. You are so misguided. He sought godhood, and in a way, he has what he wanted. He is a corpse god, a lord of death more terrible and vile than my adopted grandfather, who offers those who follow him the gift of renewal. Mortarion gestured with silence. You look at this land and see only ruination. It is a shame for you that Nurgle's potential is invisible. Where you see destruction, I see but one phase in a cycle of death, rebirth and decay. It is a glorious, colourful, vital, so much more than our father's pale lies. All secrets might be known within the warp, said Mortarion. It is timeless and eternal. Everything that happens here is reflected there endlessly. Every moment can be accessed, every lie heard, every broken promise relived. I have been deep within, far from Nurgle's garden, into realms where secrets flock like corpse lies. I found many interesting things there. Do you know why he made us? He drew back the scythe. Do you think it was for affection? I think once I've crippled you and you lie blind and useless in an iron cage, begging to die, I might tell you. And then your fine words here will burn in your mouth. Mortaria made a wet, clotted sound behind his mask. His white-eyed gaze moved over Gilliman's limbs. But that is yet to come. Legs first, I think, he said. You will not be needing those at all. Do not wa worry, my brother. My scythe is sharp. It will only hurt a little. Again, as it always seems to fall back on, the Emperor. The more we get to see and learn of the Primarchs, the more it really comes becomes clear, as I've said before. They, they were just human, and they, they, more human than they realized. You know, they're such elevated beings that they, they think they're so far above humanity, but all of their flaws are the most human of flaws. It truly seems the more we get to see that the galaxy was torn apart from the, the precipice of this eternal peace due to the Primarchs and the Emperor just not knowing how to really be a family. In all the glimpses we get, you get the feeling that, especially the Primarchs, that's all they really wanted on some level. And perhaps the Emperor, so elevated as he was, he just didn't quite know, realise that. He didn't know how to achieve that bond because he had something greater in mind. He had the unification of an entire species. But still, let's carry on. Silence descended. A blinding light stopped it dead. 
The girl stepped into the air above the melee. A dome of light sprang up from the ground. It expanded with light speed, catching everything in its shining radius. Men and space marines staggered. The Neverborn screamed. Mortarion's weapon was caught the instant before it could descend. A mighty wind blew up, blasting the flog away. Near the girl, the mist vanished. Further out, it flowed quickly back, revealing more and more of the battlefield, until only the farthest reaches were obscured. The sun broke through and lit upon the broken plain. The lesser Neverborn evaporated like ice in a furnace, cast wailing back into the immaterium. The greater staggered, their bodies scourged by the girl's glow, their skin blistered, their eyes cooked in their heads. They howled and screamed. Mortarion, being more demon now than human, was flung backwards, his wings bent around his body. The bonds holding Gilliman shattered to glowing motes, and the Primarch surged free. Oh yes, the Big E himself, Dad's come down to Layla Law. The girl, now, if you've ever seen my Emperor's current status upload, is in my opinion quite clearly the Emperor, finally acting on the galactic stage once again. If you haven't watched that video, go check that upload out, and then you'll understand a bit more about this situation with the, the girl, who's basically the Emperor. I'm just gonna say it, okay? She's essentially been possessed by the Emperor. No other explanation for it. The ease in which Mortarion is frozen Lesser demons just evaporating like ice in a furnace. Greater demons literally burning in his presence, eyes cooking in their heads. You know, Mortarion was flung backwards with his wings bent around his body. Gilliman's bonds being shattered. There is no doubt, no doubt in my mind that this was the Emperor possessing the girl and just laying the smack down. And I absolutely loved it. I loved the Emperor. I love it when we get to see glimpses, mainly obviously back in the day of the Great Crusade, of just his sheer power and how powerful he was. And to get little glimpses of this now in the current 40k timeline, oh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And let's not forget, you know, the Emperor's still imprisoned on the Golden Throne. He's doing this telepathically across the, the galaxy. He's on the move again, and, you know, the return of Gilliman has obviously put his plans into motion. So yeah, I I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. But let's carry on. Gilliman did not pause to consider the strangeness of his liberation, but strode forth immediately, brandishing his father's sword. Mortarion, enough! Now you will face me and collect the wages of treachery, shouted Gilliman. The Lord of Death staggered up to his feet and hefted his scythe, but he did not turn to attack his brother. He swung silence backwards instead, its edge opening a slit in time and space. The demon Kugar staggered through first. His palaquin was left in flaming ruins on the field, and his own back was afire. I will face you, Rabute Gilliman, said Mortarion, upon Ajax. Follow me there, where we shall do battle the final time. We shall finish this, you and I. Your life will be forfeit, and I will take your kingdom for my own on Ajax. Stop, damn you, you coward. Come here and fight me, roared Gilliman. Mortarion shook his head and flung himself through the rift. It closed behind him. Mortarion, shouted Gilliman. Mortarion, you treacherous bastard, come back. The Primarch let out a wordless roar. Frustration and rage boiled up through his body. He tore off the helm of the armor of fate and cried out at the brightening sky. His face was red. The cords of his neck stood out. Colquan had never thought to see Rabute Gilliman wear such an expression. Mortarion. And that's where we leave off their confrontation. To be continued, we assume, on Ajax, which will hopefully be in the next novel. So we didn't get the fight between Gilliman and Mortarion, but oh man, that was about the most epic confrontation you could get without blows actually being thrown. I really, really love the Primarch interactions we're getting. And now we have them abroad in the 40k universe again. It's a really fantastic to think about all the possible interactions we are going to be getting, you know, with, with the more of the guys that return. And then to top it off, we got the Emperor with the most badass cameo appearance going. 
Mortarion running away like the scolded kid he is, you know. You're more a son than you realise, Mortarion. You know, we've all been there when Dad gets home and we're in trouble. You know, we've all been there. But what do you guys think? Did you enjoy the confrontation as much as me? What do you think will happen when next they meet? Do you think Rabute can actually win against his demon brother? Do you think it was the Emperor? Or maybe not? So much to talk about. As always, please leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoy my content. Each and every subscription is really helping me to build this channel and help bring you more content. I am very much enjoying doing these uploads and I really appreciate all the interaction you guys give me. So with that said, I'm off and I will see you guys again very soon.